up, everybody? This is Drex One. Welcome to another episode of the History of the Bay podcast, sponsored by the good people of Amoeba Music San Francisco, as well as the folks at Dying Breed San Francisco, where you can get all your graffiti supplies <laughs> behind the lens. Today, we got King Said on the boards. We got D.E.O. And today, we got another legendary guest, someone that everybody has been asking for since we started the podcast. Coming out of Vallejo, California, he has a long-standing solo career, as well as being a member of the Cutthroat Committee, along with Mac Dre. And of course, I'm speaking on the one and only Sugar Wolf Pimp, a.k.a. Doobie. <laughs> What's up, my guy? What's up, brother? Thank you for coming through. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate of course. It. Of course, man, we had to do this. I, I, I appreciate you giving us the time because... Everybody has been asking about you, man. That's good to know. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You're doing something right, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to start at the very beginning. And for you, the beginning would be in Vallejo, California, correct? V Town. And were you born and raised there? Mm hmm. Okay. Born and raised in the Crest. Born and raised in the Crest. So you have family mm -hmm. roots in the neighborhood? Mm hmm. My parents met in the Crest. Both of my grandma, grandparents had houses in the Crest. My parents still got a house in the Crest. You know, that's all I knew. So that's, a pre that's some pretty deep roots. Uh, I mean, you know, Floyd Terrace to the Crest. You feel me? Mo most motherfuckers from Vallejo, you know, you might be from where you're from, but when they go to your grandparents, when they go back to that Floyd Terrace, you really from there. Okay, explain that to those who might not know. That's like the original, like, we all really don't have projects. You feel me? But before this got tore down, a lot of, like, the bases from the Who's Who from the Crest or South Vallejo, Beverly Hills, you know, the, when the Floyd Terrace got tore down and the migration out of Floyd Terrace, that's where you got the beginning of the crest and the outside, you know, the other neighborhoods and stuff. A lot of the people, you know, where their family had maybe migrated from Mississippi, Louisiana, down south or whatever, that's where they went to get uh, employment mm -hmm. from uh, Mare Island. So, you know, a lot of original, older Vallejo people got grandparents and stuff that came to Vallejo from the south or, you know, migrated out to the West Coast to get employment at Mare Island Shipyard. So that's your family story as well, then? My grand, my granddad was a foreman, a general foreman at uh, Mare Island. Mm. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're not, uh, so we've had uh, a few of people from the Crest on the show. We've had Sleep Dank, we've had Kilo Kurt, um, and... Cuddies. Yes. And they, they kind of say the similar thing, that it's a very close-knit community in terms of, like, the family structure of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, Most definitely. For you, for your generation, what was it like? Uh, what was your childhood like growing up there? Uh, sports, a lot of sports orientated. You know, like I said on a few other interviews, you know, back back then growing up, it wasn't, it wasn't really nothing around the crest, you know. The other neighborhoods wasn't built yet, you know, as far as the neighborhoods surrounding the crest. So the crest really was like a village of its own, you know. So, you know, a lot of like, you leave the crest, it was a lot of dirt around, a lot of uh, undeveloped land, you know, um... The back of the crest is a, a house way up on the top. The Borges, they own that land, and they had like uh, farmland. So like behind the crest used to be cows and all kind of shit. You know, we grew up fishing at Lake Chabot, where Marine World Dan Foley is, and all of that. You know, you walked. You know, or my grandparents, my granddad would take us. You know, so like it was a lot of the. You know, young, it was a lot of, like, the adventuresome shit. Like, you know, 
<clears throat> but like beyond that, it was like, you know, we all play sports. You know, whatever. If it was making a a, a, a taking a sock and tying tape around it and playing baseball with a broomstick and shit, you know, we was gonna play it till we got the actual balls and shit. So, you know, we was real sports oriented. That meant a lot. But pretty much that was the main thing for us. Well, I always heard that you actually played football for City College of San Francisco. Yeah, I played for um, City College two years. Got a scholarship out of there. I took it, but it was at the same time I signed my rap contract, so it was conflict. Mm. So, you know, I couldn't get this full-ride scholarship with being given the money from the scholarship, so, and I wasn't giving the money back, so then yeah, I went to scholarship. But, yeah, I played... I broke a, I'm known for breaking O.J. Simpson record, but O.J. Simpson record got broke the first year I was there. The original starter that who started before me, dude named Damon Carter from Kentucky, he broke O.J. Simpson record, and I broke his record. For uh, rushing yards? Yeah. That's crazy. That's tight. Speak closer to the mic. All right. uh... Um, Do you think he could have gone pro? If you're stuck with it. I mean, everybody going to think that, yeah. you know? So, but do I think it? Yeah. But at the time, I really, you know, now seeing like the the dudes that went pro and, you know, it was like hindsight, yeah. But then it was like, man, that's like a far-fetched dream. You know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Is you really going to be able to stay the course? It's hard enough going leaving Vallejo, going to City College and wanting to go to class and all the extra shit, football, that was cool. But what the extra curriculum of what I would have to do to stay on the football team, you know, getting up at six in the morning to be at school in Frisco and then I'm not getting home to eight at night. You know, it was I was like, you know, the football was cool, but the extra shit I was like, man, you know, and I didn't really want to live. In Fairfield, I mean, in uh, Frisco, because the uh, football, a lot of dudes stayed in, uh, like, some dormitory-like housing in Daly City. I didn't want to do it. You know, I was like, you know, keep it 100. I missed the crest. I didn't want to be out the crest that much. It was Mm -hmm. bad enough how much I was out the crest to play football. And, you know... It was things I was missing as far as, like, the music events. You know, Mac Dre was popping. Maul was just getting on. So it was, like, a lot of things that me and my partners was, my partners was at that I might not have been able to be at, you know, because I was dedicated to football. So it was, like, you know, it was a lot of stress on me. But, you know, other than that, the football, yeah. But, you know, I, I, didn't, I was unsure. Mm-hmm. You know, and then let alone go to Washington, I was like, man, I don't know. Every, every, every nigga I know that went up there from Vallejo, nigga end up in a fight and end up right back in Vallejo. And then these was dudes that I was like, man, they ain't really ain't even out in the street. And I'm, he got in trouble up there? Mm. Shit. Might don't be the place for me. And the coach had told me when I got up there, I don't know, you know, maybe he heard or whatever, but he was like, yeah, man, you know, it, this the type of city. I think it was Pullman, right? He was like... Uh, yeah, you run three touchdowns, the whole town gonna know, but if you get into a bar fight, they ain't gonna know too. So I was like, why are you telling me this? You know, it made me feel like, man, you know something I don't know. And he already knew about the rap shit, so I was like, damn, you, you really did your homework on me. Mm. So, you know, I was kind of iffy about it, but I'm the type of person that when I'm put around competition, I'm gonna compete. So, you know, even when I went, got the city, it was like that. And when I first came and it was like out of state dudes on the team and they was like, didn't really have respect for Bay Area talent, you know, cause they was playing there from Kentucky, Texas, Miami, you know, like it was a lot of dudes I played with up in city that was from other, from out of state. And you know, they really kind of like felt they outranked the local talent. So it was like, what? Oh, so you niggas. Feel me? So I figured if I'd have went to the next level, I'd have took it the same way. So, I mean, I just, do I think I would have made it? Yep. But that's 
more hindsight looking back. Sure. Back then, at the moment, shit, if I really would have been thinking I would have made it, then I, I would have kept on. Right, right. You right. know, to be honest. Well, yeah, uh, I don't know if people realize that <clears throat> City College has a uh, pretty good, well, very good football program. Uh, I went to City College, and yeah, people was always like, yeah, you know, dude, we used to play football here. <laughs> like, for real? Got a ring up here. <laughs> Oh, you want to you want to chip up yeah, there? Yeah, okay, we won, we won the ball game my last year. That's dope. This episode of History of the Bay is brought to you by Stem Social. Stem Social's five mushroom complex capsules are the perfect dietary supplement for physical and mental health. Y'all know I'm always on the grind, hustling, putting in work. And that means I got to take good care of myself. I've been taking these capsules for a few weeks now after my morning workouts, and I definitely feel the benefits. The five mushroom capsules contain lion's mane, chaga, cordyceps, reishi, and turkey tail mushroom extracts. And the benefits include immune system support, stress and anxiety reduction, sleep improvement, energy boost, enhanced kidney function, and much more. This product is 100% organic, vegan, and locally sourced. So if you want to support a small business while also supporting your own health, check out stemsocial.io or go to the links in the description. One more thing, y'all. If you're interested in promo on the History of the Bay podcast, including advertisements, music reviews, product placement, or content creation, make sure you hit us up. Email historyofthebay at gmail.com and we could talk about getting you some promo on the platform. And now, let's get back to the episode. Well, you mentioned, uh, like, the music, and uh, let's take it back a little a little further. I always ask people, what was your first exposure to hip-hop that you remember? Well, I mean, like, everybody. Uh, Sugar Hill and shit, you know, and then... The Eric B. and Rakim's, and you know, the, the conscious era of of rap, and then the the gangster era of rap, like, ooh, and then you know we was raised on Too Short, so it was like you know, around here we was raised to say, nigga, this is what I got to say. You know, it wasn't based on catering what you say to get on the radio. And then when N.W.A. came and Ghetto Boys. And, Shit like that. That was an influence on me. You know, my first rap name was Ice Dude. So, you know who my uh, influence was. You said Ice Dude? Ice Dude. So it's just, just Ice? No, Ice Dude. Okay. Instead of, you know, my uh, nickname uh, always okay. been Doobie. Mm-hmm. But my first, like, rap name was Ice Dude. Okay. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But then it was like, <laughs> so instead you know, of Ice Cube, Jerry Ice Dude. Yeah. Fifty, you know, <laughs> what, 14 at the junior high school, Jerry Curl, the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, but then it was like, you know, I came into my own. You know, I was heavily influenced by Mac Dre, of course. The Mac, you feel me? To, to go into a record store, the Mac was the first from the neighborhood where I went into a record store and to see his cassette with his tape on it really made me feel like, man, motherfucker really could, you see this? Look, you know what I mean? Then... The notoriety of Mac Dre, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, heavily influenced by Too Short. You know what I'm saying? That was my first, what really like pulled me in for is like made, that made rap feel like, you know, more like at home what I seen. Not like, they rapping about what they do and they rapping about New York or they rapping about, you know, that was the first influence of, you know, they shit, home, home, this right here, what we see outside. So, you know, for us hip hop, what brought me in, like I say, was the uh, I was influenced rap with the Sugar Hill and all that type of shit. But far as like what made me really, really feel like it's doable was like the local influence. So the Mac, Mac J, th- these are people you're seeing around in your neighborhood. Oh, yeah, yeah. Seen them, you know, the Mac shit. Before the Mac was the Mac, we knew Mike Robinson from hitting the home runs on Lions Club at the Little League. You know, they was in majors when we was in minors and T-ball. So, they, you know, it was like a chain of command. A lot of the older dudes from the neighborhood we already looked up, looked up to based on if it was sports or school or whatever. You know what I mean? They might have been... 
the older niggas at the school that, you know, even in church, you know, a lot of romper room niggas, you know, we grew up in the same church, you know, parents and shit from Ronnie Wags, EB, GB, Ray Ray, even Kilo Kirk. You know what I'm saying? Kilo Kirk went to a different church, but his daddy was the pastor. I spent a night at his house. We go to his daddy church, you know. But, you know, it was like a chain of command, like I said, but <clears throat> that's how that was. Well, when we had Sleep Dank on here, he mentioned that, you know, the guys around his age were looking up to the romper room. And you all started your own crew. Sesame Street. Sesame Street. Five Tray Five, the Cess faculty. Tatted on me. Uh huh. What do you? How did how did that crew come together? Well, them crews really was like already together, without a name. You know, me, Sleep, T Love, part of the basis of the Sesame Street. We are we had been playing baseball on the same team from Kappa to Omega, and that was like from minors to majors at the Little League from 8 to 12 years old, so like a five-year period. You know what I'm saying? We was on the same team amongst other dudes, you know? But it was it was the, them, that group was the group you was able to stay at the park with. Our parents knew each other. We already was spending the night at each other's house. We already was around the same grade. Walked to school together, all the shit. So it was like, you was already with that crew. It just, now you gave it a name. So, you know, that that was the basis, the basis of it. And the name Sesame Street came from the rock room being named after another kid's show. Yeah, it was like a spinoff. Like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, they doing that, we gonna do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And another member of the crew is Mac Maul. And Booby. Shout out to Booby, who's here in the building with Dang. us today. Yes. Um, but as far as making music, Maul is the first one to get involved with uh, putting records out, right? Putting records out. Yeah. But first, first uh, music from the Sesame Street, really, I believe, I believe, if I ain't mistaken, I really think I'm right. It was uh, Lulu and Tino. Okay. You feel me? So, like, putting tapes out. Yeah. Yeah. Recording at, at DJ C's house. You know what I'm saying? Because that, that was your introductory. Recording at, at DJ C's house. You feel me? A lot of people, you know, C's been dead a long time, but that was the entry. You had to be stamped by Cease. If you couldn't go rap at Cease's house, you might as well hang it up. You know, DJ Cease, then next, the, you know, the Mac had his studio, and Coolio, mm. underdog. You know what I mean? Okay, so these are all, like, neighborhood studios. Yeah. And Steve D. Steve. You know what I mean? But DJ Cease, it was other studios you might could have paid to get in or whatever, but Cease, yeah, Cease, you might get gone, and your, your shit, your career might don't even get no, <laughs> you might don't get off the, <laughs> you might don't even get off the, the porch, the, the platform, whatever the fuck, your springboard, yeah. you They're might. gonna tell you if you got it or not. Straight up. Uh -huh. You know, and DJ Cease, uh, DJ The Nennels, which was the Omega Boys Club dances. And a lot of house parties. So a lot of us, you know, DJ Cease would give you a chance to rock the mic when Mac, if Mac Dre finna perform at the, uh, when Mac Dre was up and coming, Mac Dre was finna be like, for, for lack of a better word, the headliner at the boys club dance. You feel me? So it, it'd be like the Mac Malls, the Doobies, the Ironics, the Young Lays. We all started off as like opening acts, mm. you know, like this is where we got to polish our shit. Like, okay, you, you, you up there in front of the boys club uh, dance crowd, Cease going to put on friends, don't, 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 spit your shit. 
Mm-hmm. Either you got it or you, okay, you flopped, or, you know. You know, but that's that's where all us started. So, you know, DJ Seas was like a pivotal point uh, of, of, in the foundation of the rap for a lot of us coming up out of the crest. Yeah, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're speaking on that because he ended up passing away young, right? Yeah. Was, well, older than us, but, yeah, you know. Still he, before he had, his time. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that was something like a house party or something? Or? Nah. Just bullshit. Some bullshit, okay. Wrong place, wrong time. Mm-hmm. Well, rest in peace, DJ C. For sure. So that's where you got your start as yep. well. Yeah, okay. DJ C. <clears throat> that was my first demo, first rap to be recorded other than me putting the, the, the radio with the tape, you know, with the, uh, putting the whatever paper in the top of the tape and recording on this one and playing the beat over here in the bathroom as far as really a microphone recording with beat and shit. DJ C's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, how old were you? I think I was like maybe 15, 16. Okay. okay. So by this time, uh, the Mac and Mac J are already kind of starting to, to get their yeah. name out there. Yeah. Well, when I asked about Mac Ma, I asked about him because he ended up appearing on one of Mac J's albums pretty early, right? Um, and that led him to Kyrie as well, right? Mac Ma was supposed to be Mac Dre artist. Mm-hmm. And Dre went to jail. So at the time, Dre was Kyrie artist, so... When he went to jail, it was like, you know, he put the word to Kyrie, like, little bro ready. You know what I'm saying? So that was the handoff. And <coughs> Sleep Dank is on the cover of Mac Maul's first album. You're on, you and Sleep are rapping on on one of those songs. No, nah, because Maul, I was supposed to be on Pimp Shit. And I, I got in trouble Cutting school for the football team, you know, cut school, staying home, they're trying to fuck bitches and shit. So it was to the point where I couldn't cut school at this point. You know what I mean? When we cut again, you off the football team. So I missed the studio session for pimp shit. Oh, so you didn't make that album? Mm-mm. Okay. Oh, I'm thinking of your album. It's the song with the three of y'all on there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you missed that album. Again. Missed it. <laughs> okay. Missed it. <laughs> really. Well, that dropped when, when Ma was only like 16, right? We was all at the high school at home. Yeah. And um, when you saw that happening, did, did things start clicking like, oh, this rap shit is starting to get real? Or It already was, you know, that just solidified it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I said, with me, I seen it was getting real with the Mac, then Mac okay. Dre. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where, you know, you, you seeing... DJ C's at the boys club now, niggas throwing out the Mac Dre, Young Black Brother cover, you know, the Cuddies and Finger Wave, Donkey Rope, or the whole shit, you know, then took their picture at, at, at Dan Foley and shit, brought the Benzes and shit out, all the shit. So it's like, oh, no, nah, it was already, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, nah, this, this, this getting real. It, it's, it, this is not a far-fetched dream no more. At, at what point... Does Kyrie approach you about signing to Young Black Brother? Um, after, after he he had already did his thing with Maul, and I think Maul had signed the deal with Relativity, and Kyrie had signed a, a, a label deal with Atlantic, so he had signed Ray Love, Young Lay. And the word was out, like, you know, he looking for another artist. And really, it was Sleep Dank. Mm. You know, because at the time, I'm going to keep it hunting. At the time, I really didn't want to fuck with Kyrie. You know what I'm saying? It was more like, and to keep it 100, it was like, you know, it wasn't nothing really about Kyrie because I really didn't know him. I just knew what I had heard. You feel me? So what I had heard was, you know, he... And now looking back, I can understand because far as like if I sign you, I ain't signed your crew. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So far as a crew and when he dealt with Maul, being part of Maul crew, it was like, 
man, this nigga want Ma to come to the studio. And only know nigga Ma part of the five trade five. Nigga, we supposed to be there and all this shit, but you ain't understanding as far as the business. He only need him. His money is invested in him. You feel me? And at that point, I wasn't ready to understand that yet. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, nah, this nigga try to pull the, the rapper away from the crew. He he trying to pull Dre away from the romp. He trying to pull Maul away from the sets. Nigga, I mean, fuck that, right? But but he had that bag, though. You feel me? So it was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Who got what? The signing bonus in advance. <coughs> Hold on, man. Let's talk some business. You feel me? And even in dealing with him, you know, it wasn't like that because, you know, with me and Kyrie, you know, Kyrie understood. I'm for my niggas, man. I don't know what's been going on over here, but uh, for this song, I need this many Crest niggas over here in the background and all of that shit. And at one, one point, I remember Kyrie gave me his uh, forerunner truck. I came back with that truck loaded up with Crest niggas, dropped them off, went back to the Crest, got another load, came back. Yeah, now we got the studio lit. When we made off the heezy and shit, that's why you hear all the niggas, the uh, YBB bomb with the other cutties rapping and shit. And, you know, at first, Kyrie wasn't really with that. Like, man, these niggas don't rap. Man, these my niggas, man. You feel me? And, and, he, and he, you know, he let me do my thing. So, you know, shout out to Kyrie for that. You know what I'm saying? But at first, I was like, you know, I had a, a preconception of how Kyrie was, you know, and, man, you know, but getting to know him and really fucking with him, we evolved together. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's why, like, making music with Kyrie, the first the first batch of songs was, like, his beats, and then I'm I'm forcing raps to him. Like, I got raps that wrote, and boo -doo -doo -doo, you feel me? Then after a while, when we blended together and began to mesh and get to, you know, that's when the real magic start happened. So just so just to clarify, when when we had Sleep Dank on here, he he mentioned that he had to like help convince you to sign. He did, uh -huh. cause like I said, I didn't want to. I was like, like really, what it was was sleep was the buffer. So just to make sure my niggas knew within this five tray five crew, nah, nigga, I don't talk to a nigga where it's like uh. I'm talking to you, and they don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk to Sleep, Sleep can come back and tell me and tell the rest of mm -hmm. us. Whatever Sleep tell me, he could tell them. We ain't got no secrets. You know what I mean? So the original, the beginning, initial negotiations and all of that, like, you know, was uh, Sleep and Kyrie, and Sleep would tell me. Even when I signed, Kyrie broke Sleep off some bread for the Finders amount. Finder's fee type the, thing. The, the amount of talking that he had to do through sleep to talk to right. me. You feel me? So, yeah. So, Young Black Brothers is like, they they doing professional <coughs> business in terms of running the label. They had the Atlantic deal. Yeah. He had a hell of a roster, man. Yeah, Mac I mean, J, a, a lot of, not, Young Lay. See, that and, was all at different times. Mm -hmm. Kyrie, at that point, was Young Black Brother. Now, Kyrie dealt with the Mac. That was strictly right. business. Right. You feel me? It was a different company. Mm -hmm. But more of the same people. Even like Rick Nelson was a big part, and Renault was a big part of strictly business. Rick Nelson put out Sleep First album. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it was like a, and like I say, it was still family. Rick Nelson was, you know, a well known nigga straight from right around our area. You know, over in Loafers, but we still knew Rick, Rick Nelson from the Crest, you know, in the Crest, with the Mac and, and all of that shit. Leonard Street, you feel me? So it was, shout out to Rick Nelson, player. You feel me? It, it was a respect thing. <clears throat> Them niggas was big money, man. Mm hmm So you you basically, now you got yourself a career. Yeah, at that point, mm -hmm. you know. And the single from that album is uh my thing. Mm hmm I had a video. You're on like a desert, a desert island with a bunch of bras and jungle bikinis. And <laughs> Kyrie came up with that, right? <laughs> Kyrie came up with that. If it had been me, 
man, we'd have been in, right in the crest. Yeah. You know, so Kyrie had a bigger dream for that song. So Kyrie went through getting it, getting, you know, the okay from the city. We filmed that in Marine World. Really? Yeah, Marine World was <laughs> shut down. Those jungle scenes are in it's Marine right World. right in Marine World. Marine World let us in Marine World, into the motherfucking Marine World shit. That's why they brought the tiger and, mm. and all, all the shit. And Kyrie had hooked up with uh, a dude that was the, the whole yacht scene. Right. That was a dude that was the, was the only black yacht owner down in that Mare Island straight area. So, it was, you know, that even being on that yacht was big. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Kyrie pulled a lot of strings for that video. Well, it was a big deal to have a video back then, right? It's, Hell yeah. It's not like Especially now you me. show up with a camera and back yeah, then it was yeah, a whole production. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was more. And you're, that, that is coming out <clears throat> through uh, Kyrie's deal with Atlantic, right? Mm -hmm. So what was it like um, working with the going through a major label. Did they help push the album? Did the video get in rotation? I don't know. I'm going to keep it honey. I don't know. Because, to be honest, you know, that deal was over as of December 31st that year. And my album came out October 29th, 1996. And the deal was over December 31st for whatever, you know, was going on between Kyrie and Atlantic. I don't know. Uh, you know, it was, once I got word, it was like, what? You know, so, you know, my whole career shit took a different turn. Mm. It was like, really, with me, it was like back to the block. Mm. You know, but it was like, I had got that first taste of being a rapper. So it was like, oh, no, nah, you got me fucked up. This shit ain't over, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, but, uh, the far as, I don't know, you know, I couldn't really tell you, you know, what it was, like, where I could say, I remember this from dealing with a major label and this from dealing with the Cuddies on, on some independent shit. You know what I mean? It was, I, I couldn't tell you no different. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck Atlantic, I mean, I know far as uh, the, the advanced part, you know, and... What they blessed Kyrie with, which Kyrie was able to bless a nigga with, far as the the type of studio, the the upgrade from the studios we had been used to rapping in to the shit that Kyrie had built in a house and a, a whole nother house where you know th this house upstairs in this house is you know the the business office and shit, and downstairs in this house, far as like. Up under the shit, it was the studio and shit. Then it was another house mm. where these niggas is the uh, uh, promotion and all of this shit, which was family orientated. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, you know, as far as that part, but as far as like Atlantic got us over here and fucking with, I mean, you notice my features was always my partners. I was trying to put my niggas on. It wasn't like no... Uh, from dealing with Atlantic, Atlantic was hooking me up with features with with this artist and that artist and none of that shit. So I couldn't really tell you. I see, I see. Uh, well, the album is self titled, right? Stubby, aka Sugar Wolf. How'd you get the name Sugar Wolf? Compton, and that's crazy because you all his partners from Compton. His nickname in Compton was Pig, right? When he moved out here with us. You the nigga from Compton, and that's how the Crest named you. If you know, you get a name that stick, it might be a joke, but he, you come from Compton, your name Compton. So with us naming him Compton, really it was a joke. We were sick and you know, playing the dozens and shit. And I was hitting him with all these crip jokes and shit. And then he was like, uh, oh, this nigga BG Sugar Wolf. <laughs> and I took it and ran with it. You know, we we had, the first time I started the Sugar Wolf shit, I was still playing for City. I remember it was our third game. We was playing Monterey. I rushed for like 150 yards by halftime. Coach took me out the game. Mm. So Coach was like, uh, yeah, uh, Norton, you can wear your street clothes back out because you ain't going back in. And I, you know, I'm at the, at the goddamn game perm and shit. 
So my street clothes, I got this furry Kango in here, right? So I come out, I got my jersey on, furry Kango. I done comb my hair and shit. I come out the the, the uh, bras at the Monterey College. I got my number on, so you know, yeah, that was me, right? So when they like, what's your name? Yeah, my name Big Daddy Sugar Wolf, right? <laughs> I'm popping that shit, right? So uh, when I get home, I'm like, yeah, nigga, you thought that was a joke. Nigga, I told a bitch, this bitch is out there, no, me, nigga, Big Daddy Sugar Wolf. So it was really a joke being funny. And when it came time to name the album and shit, you know, Kyrie was like, what you, what, what, what's going to be your rap now? It's Doobie. He just, that's it? I just, yeah, he just, so, AKA Sugar Wolf. Being funny, like, nigga, I'm going to show you what I made out this name. That's a joke. And it stuck. It's a pretty hard name. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Good luck. And, uh, <laughs> I'm guessing Doobie, is there a story about smoking weed behind that name? I mean, somewhat. Doobie came from my mama. Mm. You know, my whole family called me Doobie. You know, my real name is Major Norton, the third. But, you know, my daddy name is Major. His daddy name is Major, you know, but ain't nobody finna be figuring out which Major we calling. So, my name, my grandmama, granddaddy, cousins, whoever, since this big, I always been doobie. Hmm. My mama got pregnant. I was the end of her joint. Hmm. You feel me? And one of the most smoking joints. So, I was her dude. <laughs> you feel me? I was the end of the joint. Okay. You know what I mean? So, you know, that that's where Doobie came from. That's what's up. Uh, well, another important part of that album, classic album, is that it's, is that Mac Dre's first appearance coming home from prison? Yeah, like a motherfucker. That's why I wasn't even tripping on rapping with him. You feel me? And then, you know, that's why he gave me, like, the props at the end of the song, because I'm like, man, do your thing. You feel me? That's why he was like, I'm fresh out the rallies, and Cuddy giving me a love on his album. That was big enough for me. You know, yeah. like, you know, this still, it ain't like we the same age. You know what I mean? I done looked up to this nigga since I was a young nigga, you know what I mean, as far as this rap shit. You feel me? So for him to give me my props like that, doobie, big old pimp you, I was like, you nigga, <laughs> do you you talking about, nigga? You feel me? You going to do your thing, bro. You feel me? So it was like, yeah, that was his first get down fresh out the feds, you know? How how long had he been home at that point? Shit, like months. Mm -hmm. Maybe like maybe two months or something because it wasn't like, you know, he even had a, his album ready and was like, I'm going to do this to introduce... You know, I think Dre had maybe like three, four songs recorded at the time. You feel me? A few the the, the ones with Kyrie when he first came home. So, you know, that was big to me. Those ended up on like the Black Elation. No. No. Stayed in the vault. No, 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 because I know uh what you like. I'm the coldest MC oh, ever. That was uh, West Coast Bad Boys, I believe. You feel me? So, them, them was like his first songs mm. that wasn't released yet. But his first thing got released. The first one on Wax was on your album. Right here? Right, right, you right, right, me? right. So, right. I was like, yeah. So, I mean, you, you, have, you, you have a hell of a solo career, but something that's interesting is I believe from that point on, you're on every single Mac Dre project. It was... It was Cutty shit. Yeah, but there's other crash side rappers that nigga, are not nigga, on nigga. every single... You're on Man, every listen, single listen, project. Listen, it, it was the one where, right, I got that blessing because it was like, you know, when I... As far as Dre, when he left, right, we heard Doobie Rap, but we really hadn't really heard Doobie Rap because it was football. Mm. You feel me? So, nigga, now you rap and you rapping like that? Nah, Cuddy, you fucking with me. Mm. You feel me? And I was like, you know, I'm rocking with it. So it's like, you know, even beyond the rap shit, it's, it's like, you know, beyond the studio rap shit, it's like, nigga, when we go places, when we in motion, you feel me? Beyond rap, it was like, nigga, this crush shit, nigga, I'm with it. Whatever we talking about, 
if it's throwing hands and feet, if it's ba 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 at the bitch, nigga, whatever, nigga, it was, nigga, I'm with it. You feel me? So it was like, nigga, the cutty with me, nigga, I know he can hold his own. You feel me? So, you know, a lot of that, that's what that came from. So y'all really clicked yeah. and formed a bond, a real Cut bond. Cutthroat committee. Yeah. Right? Really was started. We was in Kansas City. We was doing uh, verse licks, verses. And Dre seeing like, seeing me hold my own on, uh, what, that's the beat? <laughs> All right, let me get my bread. Same like he was doing. So he was like, Cuddy, we out here, nigga. These niggas got beats, nigga. We might as well do an album together. That's where it started. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It, it began as a me and him album. But I'm seeing the three times crazy three-man swing. I'm like, Cuddy, we could rock one of them our own. You feel me? Our era of the crest was the romper room, the Ses- Sesame Street, and the crew thing. Mm-hmm. So it was, man, we got to bring PSD into this shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So that's how that started. You know, that's how it turned into a three-man thing. So when we came home from Kansas City, we had songs with two verses on with spaces left like, P.S., we already got this, you know, get in. You feel me? And that's how the cut committee began. Mm -hmm. You know, that's Mm -hmm. how it turned into three people. But as far as like, like what you're saying, being on all the Dre shit. It started with the two of y'all. Yeah, but I'm saying... All of that was in the same motion. Right. You feel me? This how me and Dre was fucking with it. So as far as your question, being on his shit, that's how I would end up on his shit. And being with him on that type of time, when he got at me about, okay, we need to do an album. Yeah. Whoa. Instead of me like, yeah, we going to do an album. It was like, man, nigga, Keith, Agent Man, and, and Bart. Working they three man thing, nigga. That that ain't nothing but a first piece. We might as well bring PS right, up right, in there. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you know. Well, I wanted to ask you too to to like go through the timeline um, of Young Black Brother. Mm-hmm. I did mention the Black Elation, which you're also on dope ass compilation, and you ended up dropping one more album on uh, Young Black Brother. No. My album with Young Black Brother, right, was the Doobie, a.k.a. Sugar Wolf album. Everything else for that Skrilla actually is songs made before. Feel me? The, 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 the Doobie, a.k.a. Sugar Wolf, that batch of songs was when, was when we hit the hot spot. Like, when, like I say, me and Kyrie, we made songs, and we made damn near 50 songs. So, uh, what's that shit? Uh, uh, I can't remember, but it's 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 for that Skrilla, Doobie, aka Sugar Wolf, the uh, Why Change Now or what's that? Uh, no, Turfmatic is Washout. Shout out to Washout. That that was Jonas. Mm-hmm. Turfmatic, all Jonas. That was Jonas, baby, right? But uh. It was three albums that was released after the Doobie, a.k.a. Sugar Wolf, that was, them was songs left with Kyrie because we did so many songs. So did y'all put that out together or did he just... He put that out. Okay. You feel me? I was done recording. I was like, okay, well, ain't, ain't no more Atlantic money and shit. You know what I mean? Whatever. We parted ways. At the time, I think... uh because, uh, I mean, I really, for, for a good minute, I was pissed off. Like, every time I do a goddamn album with somebody else, here come one of these 1995 as uh, album songs and shit, right? But I understand, you know, you, you pay money to mm, make the mm, shit. Mm, mm, so I can't tell you don't sell it, you know what I mean? You know, you know whenever my piece of it going to find me, you know, It'll find me, but, you know, I used to be, like, rebellious against that shit, like, you know, because my next album uh, was with Coolio, the underdog. Yeah, because Coolio had had his own label, too. You feel me? Uh Coolio was like, it was around 98. Coolio was like, man, you out here grinding and shit. You got too much talent for this. Come on. We finna do this. You know what I'm saying? So 
<clears throat> we did Dangerous Prospects. And then another album came out, so it'll be Dangerous Prospects out in this Kyrie album. You know what I'm saying? And then I want to say it happened again around uh, Turfmatic with Jonas. Watch House. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I mean, you know, hey. So as a solo artist, you're, you're kind of moving in and out of different situations and still campaigning with Dre. Cutthroat Committee comes out. That's a dope-ass album, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, Appreciate I like that one. I mean, it, it, it meant something. It represented Cutthroat Committee, right? With our era growing up under the romper room, it wasn't just the Sesame Street that was younger than the romper room. You had another crew called the Crew Thing. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And PSD was part of the Crew Thing. You feel me? So it was like a spokesman from each crew. Right. Dre spoke for the romp. PS spoke, spoke for the Crew Thing. And I spoke for the Sesame Street. And we spoke for that era. Going back to the Nennels, the Boys Club dances, you know, the funk. Our era of that shit, it was like, what? Romp got funk with who? We own their little brothers. Mm. What, what, what? And we getting on. What? If we there, we own them grown niggas that's their age too. You feel me? We was like wild youngsters up under them niggas that, you know. So, you know, it, it was like Cutthroat Committee spoke for that whole era of what we grew up in, our era of the crest. You know, our, our that era. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Mm-hmm. So that that's why it really meant what it meant to a lot of motherfuckers. For straight, mm-hmm. straight up. Yeah, it's a dope crew. Turf Buccaneers, dope album. And uh, maybe I'm skipping ahead. If I am, you can you can bring me back. But that's about the time that Dre is starting this, right? No. Okay. A little before. Yeah. Okay. A little before. Okay. A little before. But that's about the time the music is beginning to be this induced. Yeah. You feel me? This is the beginning of when we is introduced to pills. Mm-hmm. So the, the <laughs> music is this induced, nigga. We are in the studio up, nigga. You feel me? We're, we're, we're wherever we at, nigga, we, nigga, what? With it. You feel me? However you want it. You know what I mean? And you know, that that's kind of like how, you know, the reaching out and, and and bumping elbows with other motherfuckers, the who's who, you know, the the the, the Frisco, the Filmo Cats, you know, the, the the RBLs, the Yuck Mouse, the Kick the Sneaks, you know what I'm saying? The the bumping into them, it was, oh, these the lit niggas from Vallejo. Oh, yeah, y'all the lit niggas from Oakland. What's up, nigga? We out here, nigga. What you feel me? It was a, it was a bo bo bo. You feel me? So going into the theaters, that's why Dre dream for the theater shit was not just a crest dream. It was a Bay Area right. unity thing. Like, right, you know, right, right. It, it ain't just us. You know who all we fuck with. It ain't just, we just fuck with the crest nigga. We don't go to Oakland and just, it's the crest nigga. We go to Oakland and fuck with the Oakland niggas we fuck with. We don't go to Frisco and be like, oh, nigga, it's the crest. We go to Frisco and fuck with the niggas that from Frisco we fuck with. Wherever we go, it's niggas we fuck with. You know what I'm saying? And it's uh, if they come our way, they come they going to come and fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? So it was a you know a, a unification thing. Well, since the music was this induced, do you remember the first time that you this? Yeah. Right right up here in Frisco on, on Q Sater. <laughs> right up here. Got there right. It was, it was, I told a story not too long ago. It was me, Jazz Wine, and Whip. And them niggas, I, I rode out here to meet Champelli to get some weed. Get mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout right? out to Champelli. And, and Pelly wasn't answering the phone. So I done rode out here like, nigga. But these niggas is coming out here to get a pill. Right? So when I see them get the pill, I'm like, nigga. Y'all done rode away out here to get a goddamn pill, nigga. And I watch them pay the nigga $20. I'm like... Nigga, you might as well have came out here and get a rock, a hubba, right? <laughs> right? And, and I'm like, Whip, let me see that shit. Whip, let me eat. I should. 
He let me see the pill. He go $20, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and the nigga got the tripping. <laughs> Shook, man, I don't play with your drugs. Man, because he like, he thinking I'm playing with him hot, then hear this shit. He like, man, give me my pill, man. I'm like, I popped it. He just, man, you don't even pop pills, man. <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, I really popped it, nigga. He like, man, quit playing, Shook. I don't play with your drugs. Give me my drugs, man. I'm like, man, see, you just serious about this shit? Like, I gave you $20, go get you another. He's like, he might don't even got no more. <laughs> right? So we, 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 they called Jazz Cousin, hit the corner, you know, he got some more, boom. But the whole shit, that, that was my first time. And, and I didn't even know what the pill high was because I thought that was me. I didn't know it was, wasn't doing shit, but in Hassan, right, right. every motherfucking thing, the, it, it was my, <laughs> my my brain. Anything I thought, my brain was like, yeah, let's do that. Right. Let's overdo that. You feel me? <laughs> so I didn't really understand the pill high till after I got home and kind of like backtracked my night, you know? And I was like, oh, okay, this shit don't make me do nothing but what I already, already do. Right. You feel me? So it was like, you know. But that, that was my first time. Well, you could definitely hear the effect on the music. Because one, one thing I noticed about y'all music is, is gangster as hell. It's very cut, though. But there's also a lot of, like, humor. There's a lot of shit that's kind of strange. It sounds. That's the crest, though. Uh-huh. You feel me? Everybody in the crest is with the shit, but with the jokes. Mm-hmm. Nigga, we sitting on mamas, and you want to fight about it? We can fight, but that's still, I'm still going to talk about that lady. <laughs> you know what I mean? I might don't say, well, what about your mama? You feel me? The, uh, 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 the clean way to talk about a nigga mama in, in the crisis. But what about that lady, though? You feel me? You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> what lady? That lady that be having her wig slid to the side. Nigga, that hurt, nigga. You feel me? So the music represent that, you know, we, we we in the street, but it's still, you know, niggas that's up out, out all night grinding, pistols on them, and all the shit. It's still niggas making jokes and sigging and mm-hmm. shit to pass the time. You know what I mean? Nigga go to prison with the shit. You still sigging and shit to pass the time. For those who don't know what sigging is, it's capping or whatever you call it, bagging. Or whatever, you know what I mean? But in the crest, it's called, it's called sigging. Mm-hmm. You say something the wrong way, a nigga going, oh, you sigging? If you laugh, you might be next. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's us, you know? But that's, a lot of that come out through the music because, you know, before it was, was the music, you know, that's how it is in the neighborhood. So I, I, I feel what you're saying. And of course, that's going to come through the music because that was us. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense, and and um, I've I seen a lot of people compare with like the music y'all was making to what's going on now, and there's a lot of gangsta ass street music <coughs> that's there's like no partying involved. There's no like y'all were still making it, having fun. Dre started that. You feel me? Had off. Dre was the first nigga to be like. Nigga, I'm not the hardest nigga, so I'm not finna be rapping all this hard shit. You feel me? This is the nigga I really am. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to get down if I need to, but I'm I'm trying to have fun. You know, all I really want to do is party. That was really him. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Dre was a party animal, going to knock a bitch. You know, if it get ugly, he going to get ugly. But you feel me? Dre was like, man, I'm finna just... You know, my my pill make me feel like this. Mm-hmm. You know, that was really him. And, you know, he cracked the door open for that. Out of all the t- all the nights and times y'all spent together, what's one of the craziest times you remember partying with Dre? Partying? We, we was in Portland, right? And this is coming off of, uh, you know, the, the, the SIG, the SIG, Sessions, you know, where it was like, you know, the uh, Mac and Mac Dre singing on the E-40s and Lil Bruce's. And Lil Bruce was like the main nigga from over there. Like, you know, Lil Bruce was known for, you know, oh, that's the main nigga talking. (laughs) So, you know, Lil Bruce and 
Dre yeah. had went back and forth and, you know, the, the shit with Lil Bruce and Kilo and all this shit. And now Lil Bruce had got to the point where, you know, him and Dre had made amends. So now Lil Bruce is around. You feel me? So I'm fizzing. Matter of fact, I had chewed some mushrooms. So we out partying. We at the at the right, bar. you fizzed and true. Yeah, so I'm, nigga, Ooh, we, I'm extra psychedelic, right? So... <laughs> I'm already Drake. Drake got Drake. We in the in the bar. Drake bitch sitting on the bar stool chair, Indian style. So I'm already on on this. I'm like, Cuddy, why is the bitch sitting Indian style on a bar stool, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm Dre like, man, shit, I'm not dealing with you right now, right? So I'm 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 steady cracking the jokes about the bitch on the 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 bar stool, right? Then little Bruce come in, right? No, Bruce coming. Hey, Dre, what's up? Now, this is my first time being around Bruce since mm -hmm. he been over fucking with Dre and shit. And I'm I'm still like, nigga, how y'all around Bruce? Kilo, he wrote on your card, nigga. He didn't wrote his name in your knuckle top, nigga. What the, how you cool with this nigga, right? <laughs> Little Bruce coming. Hey, and, and you know how the, 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 the pill had you like, if it's anything that you didn't held back saying, yeah. you ain't gonna be able to hold back saying it now. So Lil Bruce come up, he like, hey, what's up, sugar? And he shake a nigga hand. I just shake his hand. I just, hey man, Bruce, why you write on kilo car like that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> Out of nowhere, Lil Bruce just. He look at Dre. He's man, I ain't fucking with y'all right now. <laughs> Spin off, right? But Dre just shook his head like, looked at me like. Shug, you always got to do it. I just, man, I've been wanting to know all this goddamn time anyway. Why you right on this nigga knuckle top, nigga? You feel me? That was one of the funniest times. You know, it'd have been a few fights, all kind of shit. You know, it'd have been a few times. Dre didn't check the bitch. That was funny. But that, just the, I mean, I can't really explain it because the most funniest part was the expressions on Dre's face. Right. You feel me? That's what I remember. It was like, the, you feel me? <laughs> so, you know, that was one of the funniest times for me. It's crazy. Y'all y'all uh, really, like, created a whole movement just based off being yourself, having fun, uh, staying true to where you came from, but also doing a really good job at just, like, showing it through the music. Um, the Tizel Washington album, you know, I, all I, that. I, 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 I mean, I appreciate that, you know, the credit and everything. But a lot of that is the Bay Area credit, bro. Sure. It was the the interactions with the yuck mouths. Right, right. Y'all did I mean? Yes, sir, nephew. You feel me? It was the it, it was the interactions with the Keith and the Asian Mans at the time. You feel me? It was the it, even... The, the mess music, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It was the interaction with the Queens. You feel me? Far as that, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the riders and the, and the mob figures and niggas really fucked with it. So it was like when the light was shined on us, that wasn't nothing but us just putting on for everybody who we had been around. You feel me? The <coughs> niggas that we fucked with. You feel me? Like you know, y'all know what it is. Nigga, really, it was like Drew Down say, nigga, one mile. Mm. You know, this, this was like base shit, mm. you know? And niggas was like, on really like promoting it. You know, we go to Kansas City, Portland, Seattle. Nigga, we finna let them know. If, if y'all come there after we done went there, oh, just be yourself. Because mm. they gonna know, mm -hmm. you know? And if y'all done been there before we went, we, we, we get there, we gonna let them know, yep, there's some more of them niggas. Here comes some more of them niggas. You feel me? So it's like, I appreciate what you're saying, but, you know, I got to get credit what credit was due. You That's know? a really dope way to put it, bro. Straight because up. Because there was a lot, of, a lot of sick shit happening around that same time. So what you're saying is everybody's basically feeding off the energy and the creativity and the, and the unity. Yeah. That's all happening around, around that same time. That's what it was. Well, I, that being said, we still got to talk about the spotlight. Because where I was going with that was what Trill TV did to really highlight everything that was going on with Mac Dre, this mm -hmm. cutthroat committee, the whole crest side. And I've talked about it before with Kilo, with Sleep Dank. But you're like a fucking co-star of that DVD. 
But even like I say, even with that, mm-hmm. I didn't know. You feel me? The, the whole beginning of filming Trill TV, I was like, who is the fucking white boy with the camera, <laughs> nigga? And y'all just letting this nigga be around <laughs> filming niggas and shit. Right. You feel me? I didn't get the memo at first, right? right? When I got the memo was when the nigga just, hey, you know this finna be in the DVD. You know you know he got you hitting that nigga. And I'm like, what? Nigga, I'm gonna go to jail. <laughs> and he showed it to me. I just, Oh, uh, look at me. This going on DVD? <laughs> oh, they gonna know, nigga, I ain't just the average pretty nigga. I be damn, right? <laughs> you feel me? So, but, you know, the uh, the whole thing was like, you know, that was Dre idea, which was a branch off of B-Love and Justin Lomax's yeah, idea for Exhibition, exhibition Speed. Of Speed. Yeah. Yeah. They needed some way to get it turned in for distribution and if Drake get it turned in, they in turn would shoot him a DVD. Mm. You feel me? So, you know, like I say, you know, Drake was an innovator. You know, that was a, you know, you know how, you, how, how one nigga got an idea and, and he moving with his shit and he ain't got to tell everybody. It, it, it was it was like decades ahead of his time. Most definitely. It's what you see now going on with YouTube and vlogging and social media. I'm glad. You feel me? Because without something like that, that that's like a, 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 a piece of history of the Bay Area that could be lost. Absolutely. At least it got documented. Absolutely, bro. You feel me? Yeah. Other motherfuckers in other cities who don't understand the Bay Area, who, no disrespect to L.A., but, you know, a lot of motherfuckers just think California is strictly L.A. Yep. When you bring up West Coast, you think L.A. Not knowing, yeah, true, L.A., and L.A. got damn near record companies to go turn your demo in. The Bay was based on independent money. You feel me? Ain't, ain't nobody driving to L.A. to try to turn in no motherfucking demo. Nigga gonna go up here to this distribution company and bust a move and, like Too Short said, right. out the trunk. Right. That's what we was, we, we raised on Too Short. You feel me? Out the trunk. So that that's classic Bay Area shit. So it could have got lost. That whole piece of time could have got lost yeah. had not it got documented on Trill TV. And, and it upped the bar in the independent game that you're talking about because now it's DVDs. It's a whole, it's a whole nother hustle. And uh, I've, I've said it before. I was, I was in high school when that came out. So I, w- I was already up on Mac Dre and, and all y'all music before. But when we saw that, we was like, oh, shit. Like, that's, that's the lifestyle behind it. This shit is dope. And that shit had, I feel like when that came out, it had the whole bay, like, talk, using the slang, using the style in a good way. Yeah, like, oh, no, this is no. what we're doing now. Okay, I'm, I'm then that's what it right? is. A lot of motherfuckers be like, uh, oh, nigga stealing. Certain shit, nigga, if, if you got some good shit, motherfuckers going to use it. It's influence. You know, you, everybody don't know that. Yeah, you come up out of Richmond. Right. And, you know, certain shit, once it go global or whatever, you don't really know. That's like, Throwing up the tea, this dance. You go to the wrong part of Vallejo, nigga, they gonna trip on mm. you. Like, cause that that just, you know, mean when you do that with these niggas, you didn't show the affiliation to the crest. Mm-hmm. You know, you go to the wrong part of Frisco doing that get low. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker gonna start a trip. You go to the wrong part of Oakland throwing up my motherfucking pinky, like, why? Mm-hmm. But it's hella motherfuckers doing that thinking it's cool. You go to back then, Richmond. Yeen come from Richmond. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But now it's a Bay thing. You feel me? So, it, it, you know, it's the culture. Yeah. You know, yeah, so, yeah. you know, if it's good, they going to get on it. Well, one last question I want to ask you about Chill TV is, who was that cat that she was socking up? <laughs> a nigga that made me panic. <laughs> okay. You feel me? Motherfucker just asked me this on another podcast. You know, shout out to bro. Because you, you know you didn't do nothing to me, and I don't know what you had going on, but the nigga, we came to the party, we came in. Soon as I came in, it was already chaos. You know, some bitches coming out the door talking about you don't want to go in there. 
not knowing that. Bitch, my niggas is in there. It's a must that I go in there. And when I go in there, it's already up, right? And that particular dude, he was like, from here to the door in front of me, and he had somebody by their legs for whatever reason, and he stood up and threw the nigga like a, like, like a, you know how a motherfucker put his foot in your hands and, mm-hmm. and you help him Give do him the boost. backflip? <laughs> yeah. He grabbed the nigga by his leg and stood up and threw that nigga. Damn. Right? And when he did it, he just, don't nobody want to see me. Don't nobody want to see me. Don't nobody. He looked me dead in my face. And I was like, okay. Uh, he made me panic. Mm. You know, I, I didn't, I, I, you were know. You, were you dizzy? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> so, I, you know, at the same time, I'm knowing when I'm thizzing, ponytail, man, as soon as one of these bitches see me get off on a nigga, nigga, I'm, I'm getting sucked tonight. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? The, the pretty nigga that know how to fight, he get the pussy. <laughs> and it's like Animal Planet, right? But, I mean, at the, it was the one where, man, oh, no, you're not finna grab me like that, nigga. Right, right. Just, you know, right. even the challenge, the eye-to-eye challenge, but you not finna grab me like that, nigga, and you too close to be talking to me like that. You feel me? So I got off. <laughs> got off. You feel me? He, he, I mean, you know, he really didn't do nothing. He, only thing he did to me was make me panic. Mm-hmm. And everybody don't run when they panic. It's crazy that that just happened to be documented at that time. Uh, I was thinking it must be crazy to be the dude that Dre socked to have that forever on a DVD. And like I said in the other shit, that nigga didn't even do nothing. <laughs> Dre already was on the stage. We'll, 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 yeah, we still gonna rap while niggas is fighting and shit. And I seen that nigga moving towards Dre. Like, oh, you a real nigga. Woo, 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 right? Because I'm this and I'm like, oh, I'm finna fuck him up. Oh, no, he ain't tripping. He just, but Dre didn't catch that. Mm. So when we walking out, the nigga is, I don't know, trying to explain mm. that to Dre. And, you know, Dre wasn't for it. Like, man, you was the same nigga that was walking up on me when we was up in there, not knowing his intentions or why he was walking up on him. So Dre got off. And his cousin Los made sure, you know, Los cleaned the plate yeah. with the choke slam. Yeah. You feel me? So, I mean, you know, that, and it's fucked up, but I mean, shit. Shit happens. Yeah, I yeah. mean, as a real nigga. Yeah. I think shit. that was the name of that segment on the DVD, Shit Happens. Yeah, Shit Happens. Yeah. I done been somewhere, and a nigga then boot bopped all upside my head. Nigga, sure. nigga called me to the side, hey, man, and I'm like, I couldn't hear him because of the music. Fresh off stage, had a towel in Santa Cruz. And I go to wipe my face like, what you say? Wiping my face. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> nigga, by the time I done shook it off, this nigga out, I'm like, <laughs> oh, hell no. <nah." laughs> you feel me? So, I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. you give it, you take it. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I done got mine too. For sure. You feel me? So I think we've all been there at one point yeah, or another. Straight up. Yeah, straight up. You feel me? Uh, I wanted to also ask you, you mentioned it earlier, Wash House. I want to make sure we give some props to... Most definitely. The man who made this happen, actually. Joe Baby. Yes. You Shout feel out me? to my big brother, the, Jonas. The, the, the motherfucker that, you know, when uh, I was supposed to be doing an album with Champelli. I think it was me, Quinn, and Gonzo. All... Champelli was working on a right. project with all us. Right, right. Because he put out the Mighty Quinn album. When, when he caught when he caught his uh He went on the when run. When he went on the yeah. run, right? So I'm like, well, what the fuck is up? And Jonas like, don't worry about it, I got you. You feel me? Came to A. You feel me? Had a nigga back, what you need, boop, bop, bop, bam, pull the strings, they put that together, you know what I'm saying? Put that wash house hand down, you feel me? And, you know, the, the whole Turf, Turf Matic was not made. It was released by Thiz, but that was a project made by Wash House. And Dre, at the time, did not have no other artist besides himself with music done to release as a Thiz label. 
Mm-hmm. So the same project that me and Jonas, Wise House, would have been taken up here to release as far as with distribution. I'm like, well, Cuddy doing this, we need to be together. Jonas, we need to release this with Drake. But Thiz did not make that. Wash House made that. It got released through Thiz to give Thiz power up, you know, with the distribution. Like, no, we got projects. You feel me? But, you know, that was all Wash House. Well, he, he played a big role behind the scenes. A whole bunch. Yeah. A lot of the beats, you feel me, that... A lot of Mac Dre biggest songs right. came through beats that came from uh, Jonas and Wash House and shout out to Ponty. Swamp Cat. Swamp Cat. Yeah. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All that was tied through uh, Jonas and Wash House. And Swanty, I mean, uh, Swamp Cat Ponty was a bad motherfucker mm-hmm. with 900 weapons round the goddamn. This nigga had knives, <laughs> guns. Spears, uh, 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 the Samoan weapons, right. all just laying around. You thinking that they just there to look at and shit. Nigga, that nigga was ready for a nigga mm. to come up in there tripping. <laughs> Straight up. Ponty was that dude. Oh, rest in peace. Straight up. Rest Swamp in peace. Cat. And yeah, I, def- I definitely wanted to let that be known because that's, that's my guy, man. Um, and if you look on the back of all them album covers, a lot of the Thiz, Mac Dre, Sugar Wolf album covers, you'll see that Wash House stand. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I guess moving along, the timeline, man, it's the fucked up thing about this story is just as shit really starts popping off, Dre passes. Passes what? And you were in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure you've spoken about that plenty of times and... Um, uh, I, I can't imagine what kind of shock that was. And, um, it was it, 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 it was like you know we was just coming off of one hoax or whatever of hearing yeah that Mac there was a passed, rumor so, that he, he passed and yeah but when I got the call in my room from who I got it from you know. I still didn't want to believe it. But I knew this nigga wasn't going to play. You know what I mean? I, I know I know this nigga wasn't going to play with nothing like that, right? And I was just thinking, because the call that I originally got, Dre wasn't dead. It was just the dude who was driving the van, he just dropped us off at the room. He left. He come back to the room talking about the van got shot up and he don't know where Dre at. You feel me? So, Cuddy called me, and he like, uh, shoot, we don't trust nobody but you. Get your niggas and come come get us. So, when I call the niggas I fuck with out there to come get me, and then they, because they telling me, but I done got mixed up, was it 70 Highway or 71 or whatever. So, I'm riding, and the way the nigga told me, like, you know, the, the van got shot up and drove off. I'm thinking I'm going to be able to see a wrecked van on the side of the freeway. I'm not knowing that the van that went over in a ravine. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So by the time the nigga really come, because first I had some bitches in my room and I had them driving. And we driving up and down the shit and I'm looking for a van or something on the side or whatever, right? So when I get back to the room and I call my nigga and I tell him, man, take me. You know where it's to take me. So when I get there, the news and shit, they got the crane to pull the van out. The, I ain't knowing it went over a cliff like in a ravine and the van and the police bitch come. You can't stay here and whatever. But but she say, are you here for Andre? So I'm automatically like, bitch, how you know his name? And I'm like, she like, yeah. She, she just, you know, before I could ask her questions, she already talking about, uh, right now, she, she like, he's gone. I'm like, gone to the hospital? Gone, what you talking about? Like, she like, no, he's gone. I'm, I'm like, how, how, what? Right? I'm ready, like, how the fuck? Right? And I can't even get it out. And she just heard the how of what I was trying to get out, right? And she like, right now, we don't know. We don't know if it's 
the gunshot wound or because he was ejected from the car. So I'm like, oh, hell no. But, but that's when it, it was like, nigga, it's real. Yeah. Feel me? It, it's real. Feel me? When the police lady told me, that's when it was like, well, you know, I was in denial all the way up to that. I didn't want to hear that shit. You feel me? I'm like, hey, this another, they tripping. Dre on his furly shit. The van that got shot up. Dre done did some dying night shit. Left y'all. Hell no. Nah. That's why that nigga came back. Dre wasn't coming back with him. Dre in somebody backyard finna give us a call, Cuddy. With the dying night furly shit, Cuddy, man. I'm hurry up, come get me. I'm mm. in the back. I'm thinking it's finna be that one or something, right? When she told me that, it was, you know, it got real, real fast. Well, because that's probably the last thing you expected to happen, because Y'all are out there to do some shows. Um, there's like in store skits. It's just like regular rap shit. You're always in Kansas City. That's where you started the Cutthroat Committee album. Yeah. So that's probably like the last thing but, that you but expected. I, 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 it was the last thing I expected because Kansas City really had genuine love for niggas. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, but I know how Kansas City moved. You feel me? They don't call that shit Killer City for Maddie. Right. I me, mean, I done seen how the niggas moving that 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 is with us, that's taking us around Kansas City. Right. Nigga, these niggas ain't moving on no P.I. shit. These niggas moving. Right, right. You know, it might be two niggas taking you around. They got four guns in the car. You feel me? So it was like, but it was like, nigga already knew it could happen, but we, we, we tried to stay away from, or in the niggas we fuck with, Move to keep us away from shit like that and keep y'all on music shit. But you know, my fast ass, I'm, baby, man, nigga, I'm with shit. I want to go to what the who, nigga. Why all y'all got, nigga, give me a gun if I'm going with y'all. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So that was the type of time I was on. So I knew, and I had a different rapport with niggas, but I really didn't, you know, it wasn't like a nigga was out there like on some rah rah gangster shit. It was, sure. you know. It was, I, I, I know I'm on rapper time, but I know how I move out here, but I never expected nothing like that. Well, I mean, after Dre's passing, I talked to Stretch about this, talked to Kilo about it. Uh, obviously, that was a huge loss. Um, I can't imagine what it's like for, for, you know, folks as close as yourself. It was hard for the whole Bay. Um, but... It seemed like in the this camp there was a big motivation to keep the name alive and to keep to keep going. Most definitely. I mean, how could it not be? You know what I mean? Dre Dream hadn't got a chance to really come to fruition. So, you know, Dre Dream, like I say, the this shit was supposed to be on some Bay Unity shit, not just no crest shit. So, you feel me? What Kilo did with Thiers Nation was to keep on going with Dre started with Thiers Entertainment. That's why you've seen the bigger umbrella, the, the, the more open doors to more of other artists besides the artists that was on while Dre was on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Shit. The Fabs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The Johnny Cashes. The, the dudes that before that you might not have knew them or whatever, but, you know, they came to the platform and bounced. You know, Johnny Cash was ready to blow. Cat, I mean, uh, Fab blew. Yeah. You, you see what he doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Fab. You know what I'm saying? But that was all part of Mac Dre dream. Like, you know, the, the spread and let's eat together. I mean, this is... The, this we're approaching the 20th anniversary of his passing, uh, and his name is still constantly present. He's still like very beloved figure. His music is still getting listened to. Um, there's still so much love for Mac Dre. How, how does it? Gonna, it's gonna be like that. Yeah. You feel me? As long as they do it for Biggie, as right. long as they do right. it for Pop, nigga, they gonna nigga the Bay gonna do it for Dre. Well, he's really a part of hip hop history. Straight at up. This part, at this Straight part. up. Yeah. You feel me? Um, and then y'all did a, another Cutthroat Committee album that pretty much added Mac Maw into the group. Um, the original 
plan for Cutthroat Committee, everybody, everybody would get a chance to basically captain the album. Dre went first. So Dre went first as far as knowing, okay, P.S., you're going to get to do one. Suge, you're going to get to do one. With him gone, I was like, man, this, man, the second cut though committee, you know, I knew that was the plan, so I, I couldn't argue P.S. about doing it. You feel me? It was like, if that's what you want to do, I know that was the original plan. Let's go. You feel me? And with him wanting to bring Maul in, that was cool because we knew, you know, from Maul and Dre differences that had been resolved and Dre was trying to let the world know that too. Yeah, because they had a pretty public falling out. So Dre was, you know, right around when he died. That's why they did the album. Yeah. That was to let a motherfucker know now. Lil Bro back into the fold too. Mm -hmm. So that's why that was a And they cool, did the album together. That's why it yeah. was a cool thing. It was a go for Mac Maul to, to be on Cutthroat Committee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I thought that was a dope album too. Um, yeah. I remember slapping that when it came out. Um, but speaking of Cutthroat Comedian, PSD, there's a fortunate turn of events that happened with that. Very unfortunate. It's kind of crazy, bro. To... Very crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Very crazy. I, Fuck me up. I, I can imagine. I couldn't believe it till I had to believe it. I, I, yeah. You know? But like, like we said about Trill TV, shit happens. Shit happens. You never know, I guess, but... You know, but I'm going to keep it 100, right? My mama always told me, it's going to be one of them niggas. Mm. And I'm pretty sure plenty of motherfuckers' mamas told them, and I'm not none of my niggas' mama. You feel me? And I learned the hard way. You feel me? Because, yeah. I, I mean, when it was speculation, I was like, hey, nigga, whatever. Now, my nigga, you're not even going to talk about this nigga like this. Nigga, where the paperwork? Nigga, you just hating. He must have fucked one of your bitches or something. But when that motherfucking paperwork landed on my lap, nigga, and I seen it wasn't just some of you niggas that's talking about he telling them and all this shit or whatever you saying. When I read, <laughs> wait a minute, do me. <laughs> Hold on, bro. You know, it was it was it was a hard pill to swallow. Cause that, you know, that was like my nigga. Right. You feel me? Like nigga. He was another nigga like me, nigga, one of them pretty niggas that nigga uh, get busy. Mm. You feel me? So it was like I had a different love for that nigga, man. You feel me? Even, even, even now, it hurt. It hurt for Dre to be gone and not to be able to fuck with that nigga for comfort. Like, bro, it's, it, it, we the last cut though committee left, nigga, nigga, woo the woo woo. Nigga, I feel alone. Nigga, I ain't got Dre and I ain't got you, nigga. You yeah. feel me? I mean, that's what I was going to ask. You dead as Dre to me, nigga, but at least I still respect Dre and death, nigga. I know. When you look in the mirror, nigga, you dealing with your own demons, nigga. Right. Because fuck what everybody else saying. Nigga, you know. Right. Ain't nobody got to say no none of that shit. Go look in the mirror, nigga, and tell you, talk to yourself about how you feel. If you cool with yourself, I mean, I feel you. I feel you. But nigga, not, not what this shit say. Hell no. And it's the people. Ain't nobody, this ain't speculation. This ain't no made up, nigga. This ain't no, you feel me? And if you want to say that, you know how them people. Why they pick you to do it too? <laughs> and why they say this shit that I know you know, nigga? Mm -hmm. They they what they did? Mind, read your mind and got this out your mind and put this down. And I mean, it, it hurt. I mean, there there's a lot of uh, nowadays with the internet. There's a lot of like allegations. Oh, he snitched. Oh, he said this to that. But like. And I usually don't even talk about shit like this on the podcast, dude. I, I'm into the, the music. But I just feel like this is a crazy part of the story for the Cutthroat Committee to have this happen. Because this, to me, was like... 
the <coughs> old school ratting situation where you get caught for something. And to get, this is like the clearest definition of snitching there is. Nowadays, some people are kind of like, oh, did he say this? Did he do that? Did he, did he say this on Instagram? But this is like, from what I understand, this is a guy who gets caught doing something pretty much on his own. And to... To be honest, even reading deeper into the paperwork, mm -hmm. I feel it was other motherfuckers that was telling that put them on him. Mm. So when he got caught, that was a result of somebody... When you read the paperwork, mm -hmm. it was another informant they, they, that they break down that was in the crest and the description that they give it, this nigga is like, you know what I'm saying? If they said... Uh, yeah, we had an informant with uh, whatever. But what they say about this, it's only one nigga in the crest that fit this description. Hold on a It's only one nigga in the crest that fit this description, so you know who he is. You feel me? And whether or not this nigga name came up in everybody's paperwork, there's too many niggas tied to this nigga. Mm hmm feel me? Including P.S., but that don't, that still don't excuse. Yeah, so it's not that necessarily... That still don't excuse, you know. It's not necessarily an isolated incident, but it's still basically he got in trouble and to get out of trouble. Straight up. <laughs> now, whether you was trying to be slick, whatever the fuck, and sometimes you got to just, you know, man, fuck what you talking about, man. Just take me to my cell and send me to jail, man. Let's I mean, make this easy. That's like one of the... That's a big message in Mac Dre's music and the music all y'all was making. Yeah, that, that, that's what when it came to, to me. Yeah. What man? Look, man. I, I I ain't talking to nobody but my lawyer. Right. That's it. Right. So you ended up using losing some years behind this. Yeah. How much time did you end up doing? They they sentenced me to eight years. I took a drug program and knocked off a year. Of the eight years, my good time was a year, so I would have did uh, seven. The Taking the drug program would have broke that seven down to six. And I got nine months halfway house due to the uh, drug program. So I actually served five years, three months, and nine months halfway house mm -hmm. for six years. It's a fair chunk of time. It was enough, you know, for a nigga to get his mind right get his thoughts together, come out here and, you know, some of the shit that I really, you know, you know, let me see shit clear. Like, all that shit that, you know, I done seen it now. Shit that niggas talk, everybody don't walk. What do you think is the biggest change that you've gone through since that experience? To really see people who they, for who they is. You know, not so much a... You know, if you're putting too much up of who you supposed to be, it, I, the, the red flag. Yeah. He pushing too hard to be something, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's the niggas that's comfortable with they self that don't got to tell you all of who they is and all of that shit. The nigga that got to tell you all of this shit and all that, and, and, and that's a red flag to me. I agree. Them the ones. Yeah. Know I, what I mean? agree. Yeah. I ne you'll never hear me say I'm a gangster, I'm this, I'm that. But I deal with a lot of people in that world and uh, the ones that are screaming how gangster they are, that's usually the ones I'm kind of looking at. Like, it, be, mm. it, be, it be cap. It's a, it's a, it, it's a, you know, like a, a, if they can get you to believe that, they got you. Yeah. You feel me? But not knowing, you're going to make a nigga test you. Exactly. You feel me? But a lot of times, that's a bluff tactic for a motherfucker to be like, oh, yeah, he gangster. I mean, okay. It's that real gangster that ain't saying nothing. They ain't gonna test you. Right. You know, if, if you come up against him with that, oh, yeah, that, yeah, that. Right. So I, as... All attention ain't good attention. Definitely. Especially in this era. Straight up. Internet. Straight up. So as difficult as the situation was, it sounds like you were able to learn learn from it, grow from it, make the most out of it. Most definitely. Yeah. You feel me? I did a lot of working out, a lot of reading books. 
You feel me? A lot of networking. Mm -hmm. You know, the niggas I fuck with in there about that Bay car, you know, I, I, I still, the niggas I fuck with that was in the penitentiary with me, if they, you know, it's, it's, it's real connections, real solid shit, they tap in, I still fuck with them, you know. I, I didn't want to be, it was the same thing in there. Mm. Oh, yeah, this nigga talk too much. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But the, the, the real deal niggas that was about that business, Feel me? I mean, like like a nigga say, real respect, real respect, real. Yes. You feel me? So real recognize real and real respect real. So, you know, it was a mutual respect with the niggas that I fucked with up in there and I still fuck with them, you know. But if a nigga go left or you then come on, bro, that ain't what we stand for, man. I'm I'm, I'm cool. I'm Facts. fall back from a nigga. Yeah. yeah. You feel me? Even if he my nigga. What you on, I ain't on. And, you know, I'm mature enough to give you space to be you. If that's what you want to be on and you think it's going to work for you, cool. And if it worked for you, cool. I, that ain't what I want to work for me, so I'm going to fall back. Right. You feel me? Right. So, that's just me as a person. And solid life lessons. And, you, well, by the time you come out, um, there's like a new resurgence in the Bay Area, especially in Vallejo, with uh, S-O-B-R-B-E blowing up. Mm -hmm. And you, you have songs with, uh, with the boy, right? And Slim. Uh, yep, yeah. yep. Slimmy B, that's my c uh, cousin, son. Oh, okay. That's little boy. That's uh, big boy. My cousin, big boy. Oh, okay. Big boy. I didn't know that's that. That's his son. Okay. That's little boy. Yeah, we just we just had him on on the podcast. Yeah, that's Shout little out to Slimmy. Um, there's a whole lot of talent coming out of uh, Vallejo. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it influenced by by the music that y'all were making. Um, what are your thoughts on today's music scene in the Bay Area? I mean, music is art. Yes. So I can't dictate how an artist choose to present his art, you know. But, you know, some 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 dudes, they doing what they think they need to do or what they need think they need to sound like. And some of them is from the heart. Mm. Shout out to Russell. Shout out to Russell. We just had him on the like podcast as well. Feel me? Yes. I, you know, he he got, uh, uh, to me, more of a Mac Dre feel. And I mean, not on no copycat shit, like but the just... fun energy and... And just not afraid to be himself. Yeah. Don't feel he need to be a gangster because niggas is being gangsters or whatever. He, I take him as his rap show, a genuine him. I agree. You feel me? And I like that. Yeah, I agree. I, I've been seeing him for a while, but after sitting down with him and talking to him here, I'm like, oh, this shit is for real. You feel me? Yeah. And he got a nice head on the shoulders from what I done seen. Oh, yeah. He's he's about his business. Yeah. Um, well, you yourself, you've dropped music since you've been out, since you've been home. You're working on new music now. Mm-hmm. Is there anything, and you've done so much in the game, right? Like a lot of your, we've talked about is Mac Dre, but like I said, you stand on your own. As a solo artist, you, you've had a great career. You've done a lot of cool shit. Is there anything left that you feel like you want to accomplish in this game or any other goals you have with the music? Yeah. You feel me? It's like... I didn't get to capitalize on all of my music. You feel me? So that's why I still push so hard. Like, nah, it ain't over for me. I be goddamn. Feel me? So I know I still got some oomph in my tank. And you feel me? I, it, it's, it's too hard for me to just hang up my cleats right now. Like, you know, you know, I, I still got a chip on my shoulder. Like, you feel me? So it's like, you know, I, I, as far as like, what do I need to accomplish? My stamp and my mark. You feel me? Because anybody that know Doobie, they know my personality, my me, you know, whatever I done brought to any other table, they know me. You feel me? And once I really solidify that stamp and my mark, I know that's going to be a hell of a platform for, you know, a lot of other people that I'll be able to help. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like that. So, I need that. Well, I know you still got gas in the tank. Feel me? I know you still got bars. Petro. Uh, this is our first time really sitting down and conversating like this, man. But um, 
Yeah, bro, you got some cool shit going on, man. Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, and, you, it. and you've done some dope ass shit, bro. I just try to stay humble, man, because I, I mean, I know I could be an asshole. You feel me? But it's like, <laughs> you know, I just try to, you know, I try to stay humble. I keep, I keep an asshole right in my back pocket. You man, feel matter me? of fact, I got a shout out to D Ray. She's going to be mad if I don't bring this up. Oh, that's sis. Yeah, because we have. Off top. We had her on here too, and she said that something you told her. Was that sometimes you gotta act like an asshole so when you're nice you they respect <laughs> it. Yeah. They respect it. <laughs> you gotta let them know. Straight up. Either you could deal with this, you'd rather deal with me when I'm cool. Okay. But sometimes you gotta let a motherfucker know that, man, what? You know, and then you know, they'd rather deal with you when you when you cool and when you humble. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you do got to let a motherfucker know. Well. Shout um, out D-Ray and G.A. Yes. Gary Archer, All day, man. all day. That's fam bam. Yes. Straight up. We spent a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of times that, you know, we'd be on Thea's events and I end up in the car with D-Ray and, and, and Gary Archer and, I'm this and talking shit a mile a minute. You feel me? A mile a minute. And you know, some of the shit that I put D-Ray through with my shit talking, she cut like that. Yeah. She, she cut like that. She mentioned that. that. I think Straight she, up. She probably took it pretty easy on you on the stories that she, she could have told. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> like a motherfucker. Because she sure got him. She sure got him. Deep down. Asshole story. <laughs> Eyes rolling. What? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Straight up, though. Well, Doobie, man, um, So uh, all I've seen is you've been pretty cool and humble. Um, so we'd love to have you back. If you ever need this platform for your support or anything else that we can do, um, you know, we're here. It's great, bro. In. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate it. Thanks it again, It was a pleasure man. to be here, bro. For sure. Straight up. I enjoyed our conversation. Shout out to Prince Jonah. Wash House, making it happen. The whale. Yes. And uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll run this back when the time is right. For sure, bro. Okay. It's great. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you I'm to the sponsors. Mind. Thank you to the team. Rest in peace, Mac Dre. We out of here, y'all. Peace. Yes, sir. Okay. Recognize where you got the game We got our own style, got our own slang Northern California is a West Coast thing This is the history of the Bay Recognize where you got the game We got our own style, got our own slang Northern California is a West Coast thing This is the history of the Bay